Here's what Western government officials don't want you to know. Three months ago, Ethiopia signed a nuclear deal that triggered emergency meetings in Washington, Brussels, and Paris. Not because Ethiopia is building weapons, not because of safety concerns, but because of something that challenges the established order Western administrations have maintained for decades. Ethiopia just proved that Africa doesn't need approval from Western capitals to join the nuclear age. And that reality is making government officials deeply uncomfortable. September 2025, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed stands before thousands and drops this bombshell. We now move to nuclear power, equal in scale and significance to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. In the next few minutes, I will expose why this announcement triggered emergency meetings in Western capitals and what it means for the future of African independence. Picture this, 8 p.m. in Addis Ababa, a brilliant student sits by candlelight trying to finish homework. The power's out again, third time this week. Less than half of Ethiopia's 120 million people have reliable electricity. We are talking about the country that gave the world coffee, still struggling with basic power. For more than a decade, Ethiopia bet everything to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. $13 billion, diplomatic wars with Egypt, years of delay, all for energy security. Then, Trump casually suggested that Egypt should blow their dam, the dam they took 13 years to construct. That very moment crystallized Ethiopia's vulnerability. Depending on water makes you a target. Enter nuclear power, electricity that runs 24-7, immune to droughts, untouchable by diplomatic pressure. Two 1,200 megawatt reactors by the early 2030s. But here's what really happened. Ethiopia didn't just announce nuclear power, they declared independence from Western technological gatekeeping. I already know that you know the story between Niger and France concerning Niger's uranium, but today you are going to have this from a different perspective. For 50 years, France mined Niger's uranium and used it to power French cities. Niger has some of the world's largest uranium reserves, yet 90% of Nigerians live without electricity. Now, you know there is more to the story, right? France extracted over 200,000 tons of uranium from Niger and, wait for it, built exactly zero nuclear power plants for Niger. Then, Russia arrived in 2024. I'm talking about 2024. Remember our story between Niger and France? It spanned 50 years of extraction. That same 2025 that Russia arrived in Niger, they offered to build nuclear power plants for Niger. And that's not all. Most importantly, they offered to do technology transfer to Niger. So Niger will finally use their own uranium for their own people. If you weren't following up African geopolitics and you just watched only this video, by now you would understand why there were military revolutions across the Sahel. Countries got tired of having their resources stolen while their people sat in darkness. While all this was going, Ethiopia watched the pattern and decided never again. And remember, it's that same Ethiopia who refused to be colonized. Now, here is insider analysis. Western fear isn't really about nuclear proliferation. It's about the collapse of technological appetite. For decades, Western governments controlled who could access advanced technology. Nuclear power was reserved for nations they deemed ready. Africa could take a 
uranium but never use it. And Ethiopia deal with Russia challenges this system. Russia is offering what Western administrators traditionally haven't – nuclear technology with fewer political strings attached. Prime Minister Abiy made it clear, it's our destiny to lead Africa into a new era of technological sovereignty and energy self-sufficiency. Western government officials immediately expressed concerns about safety and governance. And there is more. Many African observers see this as the same institutional reluctance that once questioned Africa's readiness for independence and development. But here is what concerns these administrations most. Ethiopia is leading a continental nuclear awakening. Ten African countries are now in nuclear negotiations. The established system of technology gatekeeping that Western institutions have maintained is being challenged. Ethiopia's nuclear move triggered the most intense geopolitical competition Africa has seen since decolonization. Russia is playing a strategic game while Western administrations often attach political conditions to technology transfers. Russia offers advanced technology with different terms of engagement. Russian Rosatom declared, Our roadmap with Ethiopia is a testament to new partnerships for peaceful nuclear futures across Africa. China dominated African infrastructure for years but kept nuclear knowledge restricted. Now they are adjusting their approach as Russia offers technology sharing arrangements. Now the domino effect is clear. Nigeria is exploring small modular reactors. Kenya has nuclear ambitions. Ghana is in serious negotiations. No African government wants to lag behind. Egypt faces a challenging scenario. They already lost influence over the Nile Dam issue. Now Ethiopia is potentially becoming energy independent. French government influence in Africa is declining. Military partnerships have ended in Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. Nuclear cooperation patterns are also shifting. Western policy institutes are publishing urgent analysis about nuclear governance in Africa, reflecting genuine institutional concerns about changing dynamics. But here's what Ethiopia's nuclear bet really represents. It represents Africa's refusal to accept permanent technological subordination. South Korea went from aid recipients to nuclear power in one generation. Ethiopia is saying if they can do it, so can we. Young Africans are studying nuclear engineering in Russia, China and India. They are coming home with knowledge to build their own futures. The vision is breathtaking. Pan-African nuclear research centers, African nuclear universities, African nuclear companies competing globally. And for Africans in the diaspora working in nuclear facilities in Canada, US, UK, they are finally seeing opportunities to use their skills at home. Even the IAEA Director General welcomed Ethiopia's commitment to safety and global non-proliferation standards. The international nuclear community is embracing Africa's nuclear ambitions and only the West seems threatened. Now let's be honest about the risk. Nuclear projects have a brutal track record worldwide, cost overruns, delays, technical challenges. Ethiopia is already deep in debt with the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and other mega projects. Another financial disaster could cripple the country for decades. Nuclear power demands perfect safety protocols, sophisticated regulatory systems, and highly trained personnel. Ethiopia is building all of these from ground zero. The Horn of Africa faces ongoing conflicts in Somalia, Sudan, and within Ethiopia itself. Nuclear facilities need rock-solid security. More to that, critics worry about trading Western dependency for Russian dependency. Just changing masters instead of achieving true independence. Now, Ethiopian voices are actually divided on this. Some see nuclear power as the ultimate technological achievement. 
others fear, creating new vulnerabilities. The gamble is real. Leap everything on a technological leap that could transform the country or accept permanent energy poverty. Ethiopia's nuclear success or failure will determine Africa's technological trajectory for the next century. Success means Ethiopia becomes Africa's South Korea, industrial powerhouse powered by clean, unlimited nuclear energy. It means textile production moving from Bangladesh to Ethiopia, electronics assembly from Vietnam to Nigeria, the global manufacturing map redrawn. More to that, success could trigger authentic pan-African technological cooperation. African countries sharing nuclear expertise, building continental research centers. And on the other hand, failure means financial crisis, technological dependency, and proving Western skeptics right about Africa's unreadiness for advanced technology. It would allow Western powers to reassert technological gatekeeping, keeping Africa permanently dependent on external approval. But here's what the West underestimates. African determination to break free from technological colonialism runs deeper than any single project. Now, here is the insider truth that gets lost in headlines. Diplomatic and economic pressure campaigns are quietly underway to influence Ethiopia's nuclear program. Some Western donor agencies are reportedly discussing conditional aid policies. International financial institutions face pressure to carefully evaluate financing related to nuclear energy. Now, this reminds me of the oil industry where the World Bank has put pressure on international banks to stop financing oil projects. Now, before you rush, let me explain. We all know that African countries are still young and when we talk about young, we're talking about financially young. Companies within these African countries don't have the deep pockets that is necessary to carry out oil exploitations within their countries. It therefore means that if these countries or if explorers within these countries want to explore oil in their countries, they need to borrow money from huge international banks. But the World Bank is putting pressure on international banks not to loan money specifically for oil exploration. What does that mean? This means only the old huge oil companies like ExxonMobil, Total, Shell will still come to your country because only they have the money to carry out such explorations. And so, whatever percentage they discuss with you, since the country needs financing from these resources, your country is going to accept. That's unfortunately the way things work in our world. Now let's come back to Ethiopia. Ethiopia isn't wavering. The message remains clear. We funded the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam ourselves. We will find ways to fund our nuclear future if necessary. Now, Russia and China are offering alternative financing that comes with different conditions than traditional Western institutions. Other African countries are watching this situation closely. If Ethiopia succeeds, despite international challenges, it demonstrates alternative paths to technological advancements. Now, I want to make something clear. It's worth noting that many Western citizens, experts, and scientists support Africa's nuclear ambitions. The resistance always comes from government administrations and established institutions rather than Western peoples themselves. Ethiopia's nuclear move isn't just about one country getting nuclear power. It's about challenging century-old system of technological control. For too long, advanced technology stayed concentrated in certain regions. Ethiopia is proving that arrangement is changing. Whether Russia is a genuine partner or pursuing its own interest, they have offered something different. Technology sharing with fewer strings attached. African leaders now face a choice, work within traditional systems or explore alternative partnerships for technological development. Ethiopia is betting African countries can successfully manage advanced technology and success depends on execution, cooperation and genuine safety commitment. This is the real story, the forces shaping African independence that mainstream media often miss. 
Will Ethiopia's nuclear gamble fail or succeed? Are Western concerns legitimate or fear of losing technological control? Share thoughts below, especially Africans at home and in the diaspora. If this video exposed something new, share it. These conversations matter for Africa's future. My name is Asan Wedris. See you in my next investigation. Bye.